What's up amigos, today we're doing Genesis. I know it's been a while since I've done Genesis. The last time I did it was something with Fenware and of course Regalia, but this time we got something in the Astro Force set, which is very exciting. This bra antler dragon right here. And we got something in Premium Collection with Murdoch. I think that's how you pronounce his name. <laughs> and so I really wanted to take advantage with Antler, Wiseman, and Taro abuse, of course. And so I went the route with Himiko. So let's dig right into it. So onto the grade threes, we actually are playing 11 grade threes. We're playing a very high grade three count, primarily because of the Wiseman and the Antler Dragon. They're very good rear guard units that we want to use. And of course, Himiko is going to be our Vanguard. And kind of before I really dive into this, uh, premium collection, we got the new Starry Marduk, and then of course we have Taro. So basically this deck is actually going to be revolving, abusing these cards in the new set. Um, or Marduk from the new set, and of course with Taro and the Island Dragon from the new set. So let's just dig right into Himiko skill. So Himiko is basically Soul Blast 5. Uh, put a trigger that is a crit or a draw from your soul to the bottom of your deck. And that trigger effect activates once per each grade of your opponent's vanguard. So ideally your opponent should be a grade 2 or grade 3 once you write to Himiko. So depending on that grade, you resolve it that many times. And you can apply it to any of your uh, units, vanguard or rearguard per se. And so what <laughs> awesome thing about this is that there's new interactions that allow you to do this skill and also access to stride. Uh, Marduk over here from Premium Collection. Basically when your vanguard attacks... Uh, from the G zone, yeah, it's just, it has a skill where you can just counter blast, soul blast six, basically stride from the G zone as it's at attacking, and then basically any triggers that were applied to it, like with uh, crits, and then of course power from triggers, also basically pa passed on too. So Himiko can resolve to actually get those benefits of a critical trigger, and then when you do the effect on attack to actually start Marduk over it, it'll actually keep those benefits too. And now you have Generation Break live active, basically. And then, of course, you have Triple Drive at that point. And all it really cost you was a Counter Blast and Soul Blast 6. Now, that seems like a lot. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. And I'll explain as we go that there's some cards that actually help Soul Blast re uh, reduce the Soul Blast count, which is in the Great Ones. And, of course, cards that help fill up that Soul as early as possible so that we could take advantage of it or somewhat of a combination of it, right? And so, really, why that's so key is because we have Taro. Taro is generation, back, uh, generation Break locked. And so what it does, if people don't know, is that when it's Soul Blasted from, from the Soul, you can actually put it on the bottom of the deck and stand something. And so that's really where the Wise Man Abuse came into play. But now we have Antlon Dragon, and I think that should just go over Antlon Dragon, what he does. So, Rearguard Circle, once per turn, when it attacks your opponent's Vanguard, is grade 3 or greater. Very key. You can Soul Blast 3, then until the end of that battle, this unit gets the power and crit of that Vanguard that has gotten from Trigger Effects this turn. So, what does that even mean? <laughs> it took me a little while to understand it. But actually, basically, if your Himiko has, you know, the, the, the criticals and the power from that, Alan Dragon basically inherits that for that battle. And it's once per turn, so keep that in mind. Uh, so you'll be able to Soul Blast that one battle that you actually inherit it. And then, so one key note, it says until the end of battle. So it only works for that battle. But still, it's a really good unit. And you're able to restand it too with Taro. So that's something that you can abuse. Uh, honestly, you can play between the, the Wise Man and the Antler Dragon Ratios. The thing about Antler I like is that basically you're able to use Himiko and take advantage of Antler's skill to basically pass on that many triggers because if you resolve three triggers with Himiko, you basically are crit four. And so anything that gets hit by that, you, you automatically take four damage, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, but Wise Man is, as, as well, Vanguard or Rhaegar, you can Soul Blast three, it gets plus four. But again, if you Soul Blast the Taro, it'll restand all these units. And so any triggers on them, um, to be honest, can be inherited. And so it'd just be really good to abuse with that, per se. So onto the grade twos. Basically, the rest of the deck is actually just supporting those grade threes. Because honestly, the grade threes, they're your vanguard and your rearguard. So you really want to maximize on that. And so really, the rest of the deck is to help that soul count and also defend yourself as well. And so let's go over it with uh, Ulysses. So basically, at the end of the battle that it attacked vanguard, you can put this into soul and draw a card and then soul charge one. So he's really good. Um, basically getting two cards in the soul right away. <laughs> and he's 10k. As you notice, all of our grade twos are 10k, which is a benefit. And so writing one of these 10ks can help with some early aggression. And then at the same time, Ulysses is really good just to plop down as a unit and apply aggression, but also get advantage back too, which is really key. Genesis, uh, for most of the time, th hasn't had a really good early game before. And some of the new cards in VR has helped with that. And so Ulysses is definitely one of those cards that just helps the early game a lot. <laughs> it is phenomenal. And so with 
Prometheus over here. Basically, when it's placed on Vanguard or Rhaegar, you can look at the top two cards of your deck, put one into the soul, and put one on the top of your deck. So it's kind of like Revelation, basically, without the Revelation keyword. Or it should have been with Revelation, basically, from Fenrir, the Great Force, GB2 skill. But anyway, uh, it's almost like a better Revelation, is what I'm saying. And so with that, you're able to dictate what you soul charge, and also what your drive check or draw from your list can be there in that same turn. Uh, one thing you could also do if you're going in something very early aggro, let's say be before the Ezo days, right, for example, you can ride this guy, check the top two, and if you have a trigger, you can leave it on top of your deck and you can pass turn. So that way you don't give them CB. And then if they attack you, you get a trigger and damage stack. So those are little things you can do. This also helps with not only the soul count, but also sets you up for drive checks, like in the stride turns. So maybe you want to improve your drive check and increasing your chances of actually hitting the trigger. So that helps in that regard. Uh, so both of these guys actually help with the soul count and also just contribute to some advantage or setup. And so with the the last grade two is the Burial Rites card. So this card is different. When it intercepts or is placed on Guardian Circle, you can counterblast one, reveal a card from your hand, and then this unit gets plus 5k shield until the end of the turn for each of that grade of that card's reveal. So basically, if I reveal a grade three, it'll get plus 15. If I reveal a grade one, it'll get just plus five. And so ideally, what I've noticed with this deck is that since we're playing so many great threes, your hand kind of gets, what's the word I'm looking for? The quality of the hand for a guarding kind of sucks. And so Burial Rites is helping there to improve that quality of the hand for shield purposes, because ultimately we want to keep those great threes so we can actually call them like Antler and Wiseman. And then of course, Himiko for Ultimate Strike, because Ultimate Strike is really good in this deck too. <laughs> so I'll get into that once we get to that boat. But ultimately, this card is something that you can also plop down just to hit some numbers. Uh, key things that I've done before is that with the premium collection crit from 2019, the one that goes into Soul, um, when the Vanguard attacks, you can actually plop it right behind this to make a 14k line, pop, uh, attack, uh, attack the Vanguard that way so you can get a poke, swoop the crit, and then of course, Burial Rites is just chilling there, and then you could just intercept with it on the following turn to actually get the shield worth, so you get the best the benefit of it and actually something to kind of like poke the vanguard or even just attack another rear guard per se just to knock out that too so honestly i've been liking it i'm only playing three because there's a lot of stuff that i wanted to fit in the gray one slots as well but the key aspects is ulysses and prometheus and then burial rights just kind of helps uh with the survivability of your deck too and so sometimes that early game too where you intercept or even just pop it out from um what's it called from your hand if your hand is clogged with grade threes, that can really come in clutch, for, for example. So yeah. On to the grade ones. So we are playing four Austria, four the Revelation PG, and three of the Mihika Hirime. Okay, I said that correctly. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Austria is a really good card. It, it's a it's interesting skills, but it works so well in Genesis, and I've used it in other decks such as Fenrir, Regalia, and all that kind of stuff. And so what it does is that when it's placed on Vanguard or Regard, you can draw a card, put a card in the bottom from hand to the bottom of the deck, and if this card is on Vanguard Circle, you get Soul Charge too. So it helps with the Soul Count. So as soon as you ride this, you basically get plus two in the Soul. Uh, with the filtering effect, you filter, and it actually goes to the bottom of the deck, so that way your deck size is still the same. That way you don't, um, what's the word I'm losing? You deck out sooner. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't discard, and that's very key in Genesis, uh, unless you start running the Dreaming Dragon, which I, I don't really recommend for at least this build. And uh, here's a key tip uh, for those, if you get the, the quick shield ticket, basically, you can um, bottom deck it. And so basically you just get a, an extra card from your deck that you can work with as a combo piece or something that you really want. And sometimes that ticket shield isn't really worth it. But if you get another card, you know, from your deck and just bottom deck that guy and you just poof, then you're good to go. So you have an extra card that you can work with if you went second, basically, at that point, which is really good. And then the second skill is awesome too. It abuses Tower over here. So basically at the end of the battle, it boosts it. You can Soul Blast too and return this card to the hand. One, because it bounces back to your hand so you can use it for next turn. Or you can use it as 10k shield because great ones are really good for shield. And then also you can Soul Blast Taro so you can restand anything that you really want. And so you can rest, uh, restand a wise man or you can restuff another beef up unit. However that works out for that turn, sometimes that is helpful. So it's very key in that respect, especially on the... Um, the Ultima or Amaruda turns, where you have basically given something a lot of crits, <laughs> and you just re-abuse that card and just keep whacking at your opponent until they die, basically. The Revelation PG is awesome. It has three skills. Now, a card with three skills is already awesome. So the first skill is the Revelation, and it's active on the Guardian Circle. So basically what Revelation is that you check the top card of your deck, you have two options. One, you can put it into the soul, 
And if you do, you must rest any regards as possible that are in standing. So if all of your units are rested, nothing really happens, but you get the benefit of a soul charge. So being on Guardian Circle with the Revelation is actually really nice. And then, of course, as the PGs go, of course, when it's placed, you can discard, choose one of your units being attack, and then it's not a fly, right? So you can save your regards too, which is key too, like Wise Man and, of course, Antler Dragon. And then the third skill is basically when it's retired from Guardian Circle, and if you have another copy in the soul, you can actually soul charge too. So this card, while you're guarding, has the benefit of soul charging up to three cards, which is awesome. Uh, another reason that it's also in the grade one slot is because we're not playing draws in the trigger lineup. I'm actually playing eight crits for stands, and I'll talk about that once I get to the triggers. But she's been really good, and honestly, if you end up writing her, that kind of helps with that third skill. And other, other than that, you could just use her for guarding and soul charging. So that helps with soul charging, that helps with soul charging. And then, of course, the Miha Karahime, when she's placed from hand, reduce the next time, uh, you pay soul blast by three. So basically, if you were to soul blast... Uh, five for Himiko, that goes down to two. If you soul blast it for Marduk, that goes to three. If you soul blast three for something, that goes to zero. And so, um, they stack two. So basically, if you call two, you basically reduce six. You could essentially make your Marduk free. Um, but it is a timing aspect. So you have to time it where it's like the next time you soul blast is what gets reduced. So you play it out basically like if you call the first one to make Himiko soul blast to return a trigger. That's kind of like a soul blast three if you really think about it. And then if you do the Marduk skill during the battle phase, and you plop another one right before your battle phase starts, you also Soul Blast 3 for Marduk at that point. Basically, you're just using 6 Soul for that combo play. And then if you have Wise Men or Antler, that's another 3 you have to work with. So it really helps. Uh, I only had room for 3, but honestly, it's been working out well. And so I definitely highly, highly recommend this lineup. On to the trigger lineup. We are playing 8 Crit, 4 Stand, and 4 Heal. And we are having the Unride Draw 1 starter. Uh, again, for the crit, for the more uh, pressure, I like to actually resolve Himiko as often as possible with the crit skill, so more crits is better. Uh, you have Wiseman, you have Antler, you have Tower over here that basically makes you re-standers with crits, which is awesome. <laughs> and you get, it gives Genesis actual aggression at that point, and actually uh, kill turns, basically. And of course, the 4 heal just to heal. I definitely recommend using V-Series as much as possible. You have the one trigger that goes into Soul plus 10k to the Vanguard. Helps with generating soul. And then you have from Premium Collection 2020, you have the one that basically, you, for the cost of stride, you can basically pay this by discarding one. So that helps with Marduk over here. So that way, not with him specifically, but it helps with your strides, per se, to strike consistently. So that way you can keep your grade threes in hand, like Wiseman and Antler, and then call them in the main phase so you can actually have a phenomenal turn at that point. And so this trigger lineup, I've been liking a lot. It gives more aggression to um, Genesis. Sometimes not having crits, like I've done... Six stands, six draws before, and there's no aggression from the Vanguard at all, and also Ultima <laughs> loses out, so having the crits makes the Ultima turn really solid. So, yeah. On to the strides. Uh, this is the lineup for the stride junior units. We are playing uh, 10 of them, and we are playing six G guards, and so for the first two from Premium Collection 2020 is Marduk. Marduk is very good, just for the very reason that you're able to stride during the battle phase, so you're able to activate Generation Break Life even when your opponent's at grade two. You have an extra drive check, you can put some aggression... And honestly, um, with resolving Himiko, and you're doing a Marduk on top of that, that extra drive track really <laughs> makes it even scarier at that point. And honestly, your whole deck doesn't really use much Counter Blast. The only card that uses Counter Blast in the main deck is the, the Burial Rites card that I mentioned earlier. And so some of these strides that actually use Counter Blast are really used for the strides at that, at that point. And it's only one Counter Blast, so you definitely have it to resolve it. Not a problem. And, against, and again, you have that great one, Mi Mira Kahirumi, where you can still Blast Tree, reduce it. So that makes that term viable. And I've had actually to go into it twice. One, just because they're a grade two. And then later on, just because it made more sense to do a Himiko with this. And it's just more aggression at that point. We have Amaruda too. As a very good first stride. It even mid-game stride. Kind of last one. Turn the card face up in the G zone. Choose one of your regards. It gets plus 10k and a crit. And then if, you have, if your soul is four or less, you can draw two cards and then soul charge five. Which is really phenomenal if you have a low count soul. Which can happen if you reduce it with Ashri on the early game. Or you just had, didn't have any cards that really sold charge. You just had a bad early game at that point. Um, but other than that, it gives Wise Man or Antler very good aggression. Since they sold blast, they just restand and get a benefit of reabusing that crit, given that, that. And of course, with the Force Marker, even better. And of course, Himiko gives the Force Marker. So I typically, I typically use the Force 1 Marker, especially for those regard columns. And it has Revelation if you really need to short charge. And the second skill, I really don't use it as often, so I won't even mention it. <laughs> Uh, Ultima is one of the key finishers for this deck. 
you can grab two Antler Dragons or two Wise Men's and then stack crits on top of your deck. And so when you attack, all that is applied to our unit, so you have three big columns. And then if you have Taro's in the soul, those get restood by Taro. So, yes, it's the ultimate death turn, basically. Outside of abusing Mordek with Himiko and then Amaruda abusing a Rigard. Um, one thing to note with Amaruda and any of these crits, given any of these strats that give crits, you can actually control the damage. So, for example, is that if they're at 2 damage and you attack with the Vanguard with Amaruda, if they take it, they go to 3. And if you drive check a crit, you can apply it on the rearguard, so it's crit 3. And then you basically keep attacking, and they have to guard it otherwise to go to 6. And the reason you do that is that you don't want to give them too many damage stacks because it can get draw triggers or power up defensively, which makes that restanding not as effective too. So, key note. The other thing is Vanaguarda. Uh, I haven't used him, but he's a good uh, staple. GB2 on attack, so bless 6. Check the top 4. Um, after they place their Guardians, the, the opponent, check the top 4 and stack them in the bottom or, or the top in any order that you want. So you manipulate your drive check, and that could be beneficial. I haven't used it in a long time, honestly. <laughs> so uh, you could probably replace him with something else. Fenrir is there. Um, same thing, I haven't really used them. Uh, GB2 skill, change revelation to Prometheus skill, basically. And then the second skill was the Wiseman loop interaction. Kind of bless one, so bless three. Give power to itself in regards, plus three K. And you don't really have the witches anymore, so you're not really recycling and looping. Um, but you can draw a card as the other option too. So if you're way behind, this is something you could first try. Pay a lot of counter blast because if you took so much damage and have enough soul, then you can actually draw cards in that respect too. Uh, tier is there to just help build up soul if you really don't have that great of a soul or even hand so you can soul blast three look at the top card and then leave it on top or bottom deck it and then if you reveal a grade one or greater card you soul charge three and then sebris you can do himiko skill and if they're still a grade two you can actually do sebris if you really want to um honestly i don't even i don't even go into sebris i think because of mordic <laughs> you just kind of go into mordic because it's one kind of less versus two and that's soul is somewhat manageable but if you can't do mordic with a Himikyo skull, then you can just do Sabreeze on top of that. So that way, um, the only problem is that you won't get the crits and the power, so you would have to get that on a Rigard or something. Like if you had a Wiseman or Antler and you have a Tower just sitting there, you're just gonna pop them with that Rigard. That makes sense too. So really up to you, but honestly, I, I really use it. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, the G Guards. We have two Ears, two Iris, one Dismal, and one Lore. Ears basically when it's placed in Guardian Circle, you can choose up to four cards from your drop zone with different grades and put them into the soul. And if you put two or more, it gets plus five. And then if you put four, it gets an additional 10k. So you can get plus 15 if you hit four. So grades zero through three, basically. And you want to do that. So be mindful of what you soul blast, what you heal from damage. So that way ear is always live. And you soul charge four from the drop. That's super huge. Or Iris is more generic. You can choose up to three any cards from the drop zone and soul charge it. And if three were soul charge, you can plus five for um, for the battle. So it becomes a 20k shield. So that's really more flexible in choosing what to short charge when you G-guard. But this is a bigger shield, and a soul charge is an extra card if you can plan it out for that. And Laura is basically the, the G-flip guard. So you G-flip, choose two or more unit, normal units with the same grade from your drop zone and or soul. in a total of three. And then return them to deck, and it gets plus 5k shield for each of them. Return to your deck, and of course shuffle your deck. So it's a good card for shield and also recyclability. So you can return cards from the drop zone into your deck so your your deck is a healthier size so you don't deck out. Uh, most of the time I use air, but it's there for just that reason. And maybe it might be needed to G-flip into Ultima to, to do the next turn, basically. Because uh, Marduk actually doesn't G-flip. So if you Marduk and then you G-guard it with this, then you can do Ultima at that point. And then Dismal protects anything. Um, ideally, you want to protect your Weissmans and... Antler Dragon, so Dismal helps in that regard. So just having there just in case, that helps a ton. So, yeah. This, I'm going to show the progression of writing up to Grade 3, how a potential Himiko Wiseman play can be enabled, especially with the new Starry Marduk, as like I was saying earlier. So let's just start off with writing a Grade 1. So for example, if we write a card like Ashia, we'll get one in the Soul because of the starter, and of course Soul Charge 2. And look at that, we got Tyro and the Crit. This is intentionally set up. So that way we could actually see the ideal play. <laughs> so I, it, it won't always pan out. I'll say that right now. And so the next thing you can do is actually right up to grade two. Uh, a card like Prometheus will allow you to soul charge at least one card. And then, of course, if you call something to attack, yeah, Ulysses, then you can get him basically into the soul as well. 
and another card. So that builds up to that. And then you write to grade three. That's where you can generate your force marker, whether it be a force two or force one. I'm just gonna do force one in this example per se. Wow, it got really shun, uh, sunny out here. <laughs> anyway, uh, so right now in the soul, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So with this many cards and certain cards like this grade one, like I mentioned, lets you reduce the amount of soul blasts needed. And so let's say I call these two regards with a wise man so far right now in the main phase. Uh, I will utilize a second copy of the grade one. But before I do that, you want to make sure that, um, I guess it really doesn't matter, but you can do this way where you basically soul blast two cards and then you return the crit for Himiko skill. So bottom deck, the crit, soul blast these two. Put them out over here. Now, uh, they're at grade two, assuming that you went first. So this is assuming that you went first. So the triggers are only going to resolve twice. So if you want, you're going to put him on Angelic Wiseman. So he'll become crit three plus 20 by just the crits alone. If you're using a force one marker, he gets an additional 10K. If you're using a force two marker, he'll just get an additional crit. So it really just depends on your situation and how you want to plan it out. Uh, so following that, you can call the Mihita Kahime. And depending on the setup, if you want, you can put the booster behind the rear guard or the vanguard. Let's say we end up doing the, the Vanguard just for a bigger Vanguard attack. And so a card like Ulysses will help finish um, meeting the requirements of this whole Soul Blast um, as skills going off. So Ulysses is going to go into Soul after his attack goes through, and then Soul Charge. And then if you want, you can do this with the Vanguard first. So that way, any more triggers, you put them on Wiseman. Now, on the attack, of course, though, you want to do Murdoch stack. And so... You know, <laughs> uh, video editing right there, right? But anyway, you get any triggers that were applied to the Vanguard, but in this case, I put them in Wiseman. So it's just a normal stride with triple drive. And so any triggers drive check, you can put it on the Wiseman. But because you're on a stride now, you have Generation Break enabled as well. And don't forget to Soul Blast 3 for the cost. And so now you're good to go. So with that in mind, then you can have Wiseman Attack, Soul Blast 3, and in this example, we have the Taro. And so, of course, bottom deck it, because Generation Break is alive. And then, of course, Wiseman restands, giving you another attack to go with. And your opponents agree to, too. So, yeah. And again, this is just the ideal setup. It always, it doesn't always pan out this way, but some kind of combination of iteration, whether if you don't get the Shred off or if they're at grade three, then you can kind of piggyback on, like, let's say, uh, an Alan Dragon just to get the powers and crits on two columns on the Vanguard and the Rearguard. You can do different variations, but this is something that you can kind of do. So let's cover one more combo play that I like to highlight. So the next play that I want to highlight is actually the Ultima turn. So if you're able to Ultimate Strike, Ultima is a very solid strike, like I mentioned before. Part of the reason is because of Antlon Dragons. And so when you do the Ultimate Strike, pay the cost, kind of blast two, and then look for four cards, right? And pick two of them to call a Rearguard and Two on to stack the deck, really. There we go. That way you can concentrate and see that. So we're going to choose the antlers and then just put two crits on top of the deck, of course. Put them in the rearguard. Let me fix that. There you go. Much better. Uh, so you would probably have a force one or force two marker on one of them at least, too, especially since you wrote Himiko. And any of your dry checks are going to be applied to all of your rearguards. And, of course, to get the crits and all that kind of stuff, too. So what ends up happening is that basically, let's say you attack with the vanguard first. Let's say there are three damage too as well. It could be lethal if there are two damages too as well because you can drive check uh, a third critical trigger, but um, you are guaranteed those two crits, right? And that, yeah, I didn't get a crit <laughs> on the third one, but you're guaranteed those two crits. So all these units get that power up, right? And so what happens is that your Vanguard is crit three plus 20 guarantee. Then, of course, your booster will be plus 20 as well. So it's a very big column. Be mindful of the great ones that you have because you do stack your deck. Cards like Astria um, and, of course, the Mikarahime can interfere with either your top of your deck, especially with Astria, where you uh, draw a card and then bottom deck something. Uh, Mikarahime can hinder your Soul Blast Street that you're going to do for your Bra and Land Dragon because you can actually do a Tyro play as well. And so you Soul Blast Street to get the the crit and power, but you could also get another attack that way. And so what ends up happening is that it gets all the triggers applied to it on top of that. So Antler Dragon is crit five plus 40K from triggers. 
So that becomes 50k, a uh, 53k, and then the fourth one gets 63k. I believe I did the math right. And so it, it's really big. It's over 50k mark uh, with crit five. And so if they take a hit, they can just die. And so one of the strategies you can do is actually deny damage to an enemy if you feel like giving them damage is is much more riskier, and then just kind of like one shot them in this turn if possible. Um, so definitely recommend it. I know Nabutaro from Reddit and Discord, he has mentioned this kind of option to have in Genesis. So there's always this to win certain matchups. And it could be certain matchups like the Ezo matchup or any other matchups that just really aggro out you and of course take advantage of the Cannon Blast. And then of course you have Antler Dragon, Soul Blast Street, and it doesn't have to be a Taro. It could be anything, but of course you get the Inherit plus two crit and power up as well more additionally. And so you're really just hitting with bif um, big beefy columns. And that's just the Antler Dragon by itself. I didn't even count the booster's power up. So the booster is going to be um, a 28k booster in this example. So you're hitting over 70k easily on both lanes. And then of course, if you do a Tyro, you get a fourth attack that way. But of course, one of the attacks won't have the the five crit, but it'll still be crit three. So still deadly, still crazy. So yeah. And that was the deck profile, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Honestly, Genesis with the new Allen Dragon, the new Marduk Stride, and a lot of the new crits and everything just make this deck a lot more consistent. It's more fun. Uh, it can really surprise your opponents if they're not knowing what to expect. Of course, there's other Genesis variants like the Vakarian build, there's the Fenrir build, and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to do a Himiko version of this one. And honestly, I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. So give it a try. Comment down below, like, share, and subscribe. See ya, amigos. Bye.